Hi, Jeff Simon here from Social Flight. On a recent flight in our A36 Bonanza, we had a surprise, and that was our attitude indicator started tumbling. Attitude indicator, artificial horizon. In this aircraft, it runs our autopilot. And in this case, we were doing some testing following tracks and trying to get the autopilot to, to uh, fly and intercept in an approach course. And it wasn't working out too well. And that's when we realized that the attitude indicator had started to tumble. We have a solid state Aspen unit in the center of the panel, and that's what we use for our primary navigation. But at the moment, it's this mechanical vacuum driven device that actually controls the autopilot's attitude itself. So, time to get that pulled out and replaced. So we pulled it out, we sent it out for overhaul, and when it came back, it came back with information of one word from the shop, and that word was carbon. And they had found carbon throughout the inside of the uh, attitude indicator and had told us it was time to check the rest of the system to find out what the source is. So that's exactly what we did. We went through our system and fortunately we have a Tempest vacuum pump. Now Tempest vacuum pumps have this uh, port here at the bottom that's called a wear indicator port. It allows you to pull out this plug while it's installed in the aircraft and check the length of the veins. There are carbon veins that wear over time that produce the pressure in a vacuum pump. And what we found, they were worn beyond limits, putting out quite a bit of carbon. So it's time to upgrade the entire system. Now an interesting point that we learned when we were talking with the folks over at Tempest is that when you look at these Beechcraft Bonanzas, they actually use a vacuum pump kind of in reverse. They use it as a pressure system. So they send the pressure through the instruments as opposed to pulling a vacuum. And they said when you use one of these pumps in a pressure environment, it has about half the life as it would when used in a vacuum environment. It still does to do the job but it wears much quicker and in our uh, case only 700 hours of use which is still a good amount of time actually wore the pump out it probably would have lasted about twice as long if it were used in a vacuum situation so now we are going to pull the pump we're going to pull the lines we're going to change the filters get the whole system cleared out so that we can put that newly overhauled attitude indicator back in place and get ourselves back in the air so let's go through the process one of my favorite tools that makes life a little easier uh, are these uh, hose removal uh, pliers. You pull on these and it actually helps you separate stubborn hoses. So this is something you can actually get at pretty much any automotive uh, uh, tools uh, location, but I find it extremely helpful. You know, another step that's important along the way is you want to map out where these hoses go. So that's very important as well. Create yourself a chart or better yet, take a picture with your phone. For the vacuum pump, we use a special tool. It's this tool from Tempest. It's their AA716 vacuum pump wrench because vacuum pumps have these uh, four bolts, uh, nuts technically, uh, on the base that you have to remove and they are very, very difficult to get to. So this wrench makes it a piece of cake. All right, so using that wrench makes a big difference and the real key now is just not to lose the nuts and washers as you slowly work this out. When it's all the way against its pad, the vacuum pump doesn't actually have enough space to remove the washers. You actually have to loosen each one a little bit and begin that removal process. And then we're going to gently pull this back and we're going to remove it. Okay, we've got the pump off and now we need to remove these two fittings. These are both 90 degree fittings uh, for the air that's going in and out of the pump. And uh, we need to remove them from the old pump and install them on the new pump. And what's really important about this is that when we put them in the vise to do it, we need to only hold this mounting flange in the vise. If you were to put the body of the pump in the vise, you're inevitably going to damage this very uh, delicate uh, uh, carbon-based uh, center uh, that is uh, the elliptical chamber 
uh, that uh, the pump veins ride in. And so we want to be very careful of that. So we're only going to grab it by this and then we're going to remove these. Now, when we actually do the fittings, we put the fittings in with no Teflon tape, nothing on the threads. We're going to go in until they are hand tight and then we are going to go at maximum one additional turn until we get to the orientation that uh, was on this original one. So it's pretty good, uh, pretty important to take a picture of this or note it somehow so you can put it the right way onto the other pump. Okay, so we've got the pump off. Now the first thing we're going to take a look at is this back. We've removed the cap for the wear indicator port. If we rotate the pump until one of the slots is coming, is showing right through that hole, we can actually see the length of the vein. Now in this case, the vein is worn so much that it is below that and you can't see any vein through that little hole in the port. So again, as this, this the center of the vacuum pump spins around, you have the veins that are floating in these slots and they ride on the outside. When they get so short that you can't even see them in the vein, they are very subject to cracking, jamming. There's really not enough vein left. This pump needs to be replaced. It's good that we uh, caught this in time. Turning the pump around to the front side of this, we actually see where it engages with the gear on the accessory case of the engine. Now, we can, you can remove this little piece in front and inside what you actually see is this piece here, which is the coupling. The coupling is designed to shear in the event that this pump jams. What we definitely don't want to do is damage the engine in any way. It's one thing to have a vacuum pump failure. It's another thing to have an engine failure. So this would shear if uh, anything happens. This comes with a new pump all in place. And the other thing that uh, we note when we look at this is there's a little piece here that, uh, on these uh, Tempest pumps that uh, comes out. It's this little plastic piece. And this is a diverter, which uh, if you look at it, we have these four slots, one, two, three, four. Whichever orientation this is put on the engine, you actually have the ability using that little uh, piece uh, of being able to block three out of the four so that if there was a leak, an oil leak on the engine side through the guard lock seal, it would be able to come out through the open port here at the bottom, drip out, show you you've got a problem, but not actually come out the other sides uh, during this. So very important, uh, good thing. So now we're going to get the new pump out and get that mounted. The first thing that comes out here is going to be the gasket and that diverter piece. So we're going to take those out, set them aside here. Here's the new diverter piece and here's the gasket. Now, nice thing about these gaskets, they are solid one piece gaskets. They don't have all the holes for different types of pumps. They are specifically made for this Tempest pump. That makes a much, much better seal than uh, trying to have uh, the standard uh, Continental seals that have uh, openings for a variety of different types of pumps. Then we're going to pull out the pump itself. Now, in this case, we've got the pump. Everything looks good. Beautiful new pump. Um, and we're going to, again, put this in the vise, take out these caps, and put everything back in in its proper orientation. Now, in this case, when we were removing the, uh, one of the two uh, fittings on there, we discovered this fitting has pretty much got rounded off uh, edges on everything where it's supposed to be grabbed uh, by the wrench. And so we are actually going to replace the fitting as well. These aren't cheap, so it makes sense to, to really do your best to preserve your fittings. But in this case, um, this aircraft's from 1975. I'm going to guess that fitting's from 1975 as well. And it has just, uh, it's done its job. It needs to be replaced. So let's get this all put back together. Take this out. Nothing at all on the threads. We're going to put it in by hand until it gets finger tight, which is right about there. And then using the wrench, we're only going to turn it less than one turn maximum until it gets to the orientation that we need. And in this case, the original orientation that we had on there was about 90 degrees off. And that's it right there.
Just about every mechanic hates this hidden one, but in this aircraft we're able to come in from the back side and we can actually get it at it uh, from over here on the other side of the pump. One of the things I'm really curious about in this case is uh, what's the status of this filter? I've never cut one of these open, so we're going to try it out now. This filter has really been doing its job. Got a lot of carbon in there, got carbon here, and I would imagine that this used to be white. All full of carbon now. This is one of the filters that we installed from Tempest, and this is the one that we cut open earlier. Now anytime that we're putting a filter on the aircraft, we also mark the hours and the date of the work on the filter. That's important because it helps us remember while we're maintaining the aircraft when we have to change it. It's a good reminder. Last step before we go into the uh, cockpit and put the attitude indicator back in, replace the hoses that are going in there, is we're going to change the uh, intake filter for the vacuum system. And uh, we're going to use one of these uh, brand new Tempest uh, filters. This is really important. These filters degrade, they get clogged, they get a lot of junk in them over time. So we're going to make sure that we do this. Uh, this should be done on a regular basis. And then you also take one of these tags and fill it out with a reminder of when to do it next. Okay, so we've come to the end of our project. It all started when our attitude indicator began to tumble while we were flying and doing some testing in the air. And it's a good thing that that happened during testing on a VFR day and not an IFR day when we were depending on all those instruments and depending on our autopilot to help us as well. But we got to the source of the problem. The attitude indicator has been overhauled. We discovered the carbon inside that needed to be cleaned out. And so based on that, we found our worn vacuum pump. We got that replaced as well, but we did it the right way. We put a brand new Tempest Tornado pump in. We took out and cleaned all of the hard lines. We replaced all of the soft vacuum lines and hoses as part of the process. And then we put in new Tempest filters as well. So we are good to go. We're going to ground run it and we're going to get up there and get flying again. Now, a quick word about Tempest. Tempest is not just a sponsor of Social Flight, but I'm also really a fan of Tempest because they are such innovators in general aviation. And that's saying a lot because most of the technology that we're dealing with here in these general aviation aircraft is pretty old. And so a lot of companies don't invest in innovation, especially on things that have to do with the systems and accessories side of the business. But that's not true of Tempest. We're talking about the tornado pump now that has a wear indicator port, that has flow diverters when you have any type of leaking that's starting to happen on the Garlock seal. Lots of innovation that allowed us to see that we had a problem with this pump without even pulling it off. And in addition to that, we've got all these other Tempest products that we'll be talking to you about in other videos. We've got their oil filters with that seal along the bottom that doesn't need engine oil and doesn't seize onto your engine. So really important stuff like that. Has a built-in magnet to collect ferrous materials so that you can see if you've got any other issues happening in addition to inspecting the filter media and Tempest spark plugs. We're going to talk to you about those as well. So until then, I'm Jeff Simon. Happy flying and thank you so much for joining us here at Social Flight.